Hey everybody, this is Art Lembo again. I'm back and we're going to continue to move through uh, looking at the spatial considerations in using SQL as we analyze COVID-19 data with SQL. In the last video we looked at how to get the percent of the population that has uh, died or has been hospitalized from COVID and then what we did was we made a, a couple little changes and we looked at that as the number of cases or number of deaths per every 100,000 people. So we're going to continue uh, to start to visualize our maps based on specified queries. Now I just want to remind you we're getting a little bit deep into this and there are many videos that have preceded this one so please make sure uh, if you're jumping in now to go back through so you'll learn how to get the data, how to install it, and how to get kind of up to speed with SQL. And I have a link down below where you can get all that information. So what I want to do now is find any new deaths for a specific day. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it and bring it into our spatial light. And here's our query. Let's make it a little bigger so you guys can see that. So if you remember, we've been playing this little game, right? If, if the table spatial table exists, we're going to drop it and then we're going to create the spatial table as this select statement. When that's done, we have to register that table with SQLite. And as I've said uh, many different times, things work a little bit differently with SQLite compared to something like SQL Server or Postgres or Oracle. So these are just a couple of little compromises I've made along the way in order to get this thing to run, uh, but also make it really easy to be able to download a very small zip file and have all your data and software there ready to go. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm going to drop that table, but what this select query is going to do is it's going to find all the increases in death for that particular state um, and it's going to get the state uh, code where the state geometry file, so remember we have a file here that has a geometry column called state. So we're going to look at that compared to daily where the state name in daily, which is like for Maryland MD, for New York it's NY, where that's equal to the state USPS code. All right, but the other thing we're doing is we're saying and where the date is equal to, in this case, August 10th. So we'll run this, and that's completing to get this little number again because we're not asking to see a result, we're asking to create a table. If I want to, we can get rid of this and let's get rid of that and then let's run the query one more time. Oh, we just have to get rid of the as. There we go. Alright, so that's the actual result. So we have the ID, we have the geometry, we have the date, and then we have the, the increase in deaths and the state. Then back here in QGIS I'm just going to hit Control Shift L and that's going to connect me to my database and here's my spatial table. I'm going to add that and we'll close it and let's zoom in over to here and I'm going to also come back in and change the coordinate system to Lambert Conformal Conic and again because of my internet connectivity I'm not bringing in the OpenStreetMap which will which will make this look a lot a lot nicer so I'm, I'm just going to not do that. We'll just look at the conterminous US. Uh, if you click over here on layers we can look at the styling pattern and I'm going to make a graduated color map based on the increases in deaths and we'll look at say natural breaks. So this tells me the increase in deaths on August 10th. Now let's go back to spatial or SQL light. And here we are again in the, the spatial light GUI. Hey how about instead of 8-10 let's look at April 10th. Let's run that. Oops can't do that let's make it here April 10th because we want to again get rid of that table spatial table then create a new spatial table and then recover it to register it as a geometric table alright that's done we come up here and you see things are kinda low in the north this is very interesting it, we're seeing in August more increases in death occurring in the southern uh, part of the US but let me just kinda shake this and wake it back up and look, things have changed quite a bit more now. There were no deaths reported in some of these states. So let's reclassify this. Yeah, there we go. Now it's reclassified, 
and what you, because we have larger amounts of death, uh, 777. Let's see what, what New York was. Yep, New York was the largest one there. So that is what things look like on April 10th. And again, we can come back in, and why don't we make it May 10th? And this is what's kind of nice. I just hit this, come in here, refresh, and I just move it. So it basically what it does, every time QGIS is uh, moved, it then goes back and looks at the spatial table, which is in the SQLite database. But again, this legend is connected to the, the results that we showed from the last query. So if we reclassify, watch that, 777. And that changes, so the death count went up. And again, we can go back to March 10th. And we'll come in here again. We, we shake it a little bit, wake them back up. Got to classify things. And w er, very early on, right, we had just the early deaths happening in Washington State. Remember that the news and the, that horrific situation in uh, the nursing home. So that's what we saw on that particular date. So like we've said in previous videos, where are you going to find a map that shows you the spatial distribution of deaths throughout the United States on a particular day? Well, I don't know where. Well, one place I know is on your computer. You can now do this by entering that SQL query. All right, let's do something else fun. So this is our table. We created it for, again, the March 10th. I'm going to take this whole select and just get rid of it, or actually repaste something else in here. So what you see now is I'm getting the sum of the increase in deaths and I'm getting the state name and I'm getting here I'm calling it the minimum geometry. This is a little trick. Um, all the geometries are the same right for the for Maryland and for New York right they're the same exact geometry. By just tell telling me to get the minimum one it's gonna grab any of them. It's just like if I had the number four in a database seven different times. I say we'll get the, the minimum value for that column. Well, it's four. It's the same one. Geometry is just another data type. But what I change now is I'm summing it up because before I was getting the increase for a particular date. No need to sum anything up. Now I'm creating an aggregate clause and I'm getting, in this case, the sum of all the deaths where the date is between April 10th and June 10th. So this is actually um, an aggregate query that's going to count up all the deaths between these dates. And remember, because this DT field, if you remember going way back to our very first video, we turn that into, we move that from a text field into a date field. We were now able to create that and have some intelligence in the dates. So now we've just, I've just run this query. I get my result and let's go take a look at it. And we'll just uh, move this again. And let's classify it. There we go. So this is telling me the deaths, the death increases between April 10th and June 10th. And again, we can change that now to, let's go to 9, 10. Rerun that. Come back in here. Move it around. And now again, things go away because we've got uh, the state is beyond the number that's here in the legend, so we'll just reclassify it, and there we go. And, and again, we can change the different classification schemes to quantiles or equal intervals, and again, if you check out my course, your statistics for GIS professionals, you'll be able to get information on, on what all that means and all the statistics behind some of what we've been doing in these videos. And for that, you can just go to artlumbo.com slash online dash courses, and I'll leave a link down below that you can click on. So we can come in here and you can see down below I have hospitalized increase. Oh, let's get it out of the caps. Hospitalized increase and let's uh, copy that. And you know, I'm going to just leave it a death increase. You could change this, but why, let's just keep it there. We know what we're talking about. But again, this is going to look at the increase in hospitalizations over those months. That's done. Let's move it and we will reclassify. 
So there we go. And, and we can change it instead of equal intervals. Let's look at natural breaks, or we can look at quantile mapping. All right, so now we're getting an idea of what kind of hospitalizations were occurring in the country in terms of an increase over those dates. Let's, uh, let's do another one. Let's, get, uh, let's see what's happening in that Sunbelt spike everybody talked about between, how about August 10th to well, September 20th? Do something like that. All right, so again, you have the ability to choose whatever date you want, and that's what's really nice about this, is you can now decide which dates do you want to see how hospitalizations increased in the U.S. And let's reclassify that. So now you're seeing a little bit of that sunbelt spike that's occurring. Now, just a fair warning, be careful when we look at this data. Look what I get for Texas. Nothing. You're telling me there was no hospitalization increases in Texas? Well, I just ran this query, and I'm looking at the hospitalized increase and the date for where the state's equal to Texas, and I'm ordering it in decreasing order. So the maximum value is zero. That's not being recorded in Texas. Let's look at Florida. Okay, now Florida is, it, is collecting it. And we'll scroll all the way down. I thought there was a time when Florida, yeah, see, so Florida was not capturing that data in May. Um, I think Maryland was also doing it probably from from the, the inception. Yeah, so we go all the way down with Maryland and um, well there again, so you see back in March, now, there just happened to not be any hospitalizations on September 20th, but yeah, here we have um, 325, so, so nothing collected before that, so in March. Uh, and that, could, that could have been that there were no hospitalizations or that it just it didn't get collected at that time. So in this case, we're just never going to get it data for uh, Texas. So I think there's a way we can actually start to, to look at this. How about we get the max, and I'm just thinking out loud here, max hospitalization, hospital increase as MH for max hospitalization from daily. Let's not do the where. Let's, and let, we don't need the date either. We do need the state. And then let's say group by the state. So what I want to do is get the maximum hospitalized, hospitalized increase for each state. And then let's say order by um, MH descending. All right, here we go. So obviously we have a bunch for uh, Virginia, Maryland, and then we come down here up. Oh, we have to cast that. Let's not forget that. Cast hospitalizations, hospital increase as integer. There we go. That's better. And as we scroll down through here, we're uh, here we go. So the Virgin Islands, Texas, Puerto Rico, North Carolina, uh, Michigan, okay, Louisiana. So you can see these state, Delaware, they don't record any hospitalization increases. So I don't really know um, what the increase is in those states. I just went back in here and I changed hospitalized increase to just hospitalized. Let's see if they've got that. Now we'll come through. Yep, so here, same idea though. So those states are not reporting the data, at least from, from where we got the information from, which is the, the COVID tracking project. So that's that's probably enough for now, but but again, have some fun with this. Start looking at all these things. Are you interested in those that are on ventilators? And let's and make sure you test to see that there's actually data for those that are, are on ventilators. And and then you, we've looked at you know, we can look at positive increase. Again, for a particular date, so maybe you have a date that you're interested in for positive cases and that that changes let's uh let's move this again get the hand there we go and let's classify it all right so this is telling me the positive increases uh between the dates that we were just looking at here in april through september and let's again look at that let's look at that sunbelt spike again and hit this come back in shake it up a little and then reclassify and now we see the north is having a little bit less and then higher increases in the south.
and don't be afraid to change this up. Look at some of these other queries we, we did before, like the cases per 100,000, and make that map uh, and change and change the date. So now we can look at again just what we're doing here, where the date is between. So change it around uh, and have some fun looking at different characteristics of the way this data sort of lays itself out over time and space. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like. Uh, also, subscribe to my channel so that way as I introduce new videos, you'll be sure to get that. Um, and also leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear how you're beginning to use this data as you explore the spatial and temporal distribution of COVID-19 in the United States. Be ready. Next video, we're going to start to jump into more granular data. We're going to get down to the county level, and we're going to see not just what it looks like uh, for a particular state, like Pennsylvania, Maryland, but what does it look like inside that state in terms of the distribution. So we'll get ready to do that in the next video.